Hey guys, I know you're facing a dilemma. Are you trying to control your breathing in anticipation of getting your hands on that new and shiny RTX 4090 with a promise of two to four times performance increase compared to the RTX 3090 Ti? But what do you do when the RTX 3090 Ti has dropped to a ridiculously low price of under $900 for a used GPU and just over $1,000 for a new one, which is almost half the price of the $1,600 RTX 4090? One thing I want to mention right off the bat is you don't quite get the claim twice to four times the performance with the RTX 4090, at least not in the current workflows and games, and uh, keep watching to see why. The RTX 4090 is built on the new Ada Lovelace 4 nanometer architecture, which uses TSMC technology versus the Ampere built on top of the Samsung's 8 nanometer tech of the previous gen. As you can see, the biggest jump is in the number of CUDA cores and boost and base clocks. What is not shown here, though, is what makes these huge claim performance gains possible, and it is called DLSS 3.0. You might have heard about the technology as the RTX 3090 Ti supports DLSS 2. It stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. In really plain terms, it's creating frames without having to render them from scratch. The AI figures out what the next frame will look like, so you can have an increased frame rate without taxing the GPU. And just to be clear, it doesn't just copy a frame or modify a frame, it creates a new frame based on the information it has. Without it, the performance gains are still there, of course, versus the 3090 Ti, but they don't look quite nearly as impressive. So, coming back to my original statement that the claimed performance is not quite there, is because almost no game right now supports DLSS 3. Of course, this technology is new, and we will see titles that support it. Here's a list of upcoming titles that will be supporting it in the near future, and uh, take a screenshot if you'd like. Let's take a look at Cyberpunk 2077. It has become the showcase game for NVIDIA. As you might suspect, the DLSS 3 results are from a version of the game that hasn't been released yet. The current version does not support DLSS 3. Without DLSS, RTX 3090 Ti delivers 36 frames per second, compared to 62 frames per second on RTX 4090 Ti. Once you enable DLSS 2 on the RTX 3090 Ti, the frame rate goes up to 60 FPS. However, things change drastically once you enable DLSS 3 on the RTX 4090. You get an astonishing 170 frame rate. I'm impressed. Another thing to pay attention to here are the temps. RTX 3090 Ti runs about 70 to 75 degrees, while the 4090 averages 50 to 57 degrees max. So the RTX 4090 runs about 25% cooler. Not bad. I'm sure you're also wondering about the power consumption. Again, the new gen doesn't disappoint here either, despite the rumors we heard early on. The RTX 3090 Ti draws a max of 454 watts, while the RTX 4090 draws up to 461 watts, but it only draws 348 watts with DLSS 3 enabled. The rumor that I heard was that it would draw about 600 watts, so this does not appear to be true. Okay, so in short, you are getting at least 60 to maybe 80% more raw performance without DLSS 3, and expect about two to four times the performance with DLSS 3 enabled. With the caveat that the game has to support it and it may introduce some latency. Don't leave just yet. Other benchmarks are coming right up. All right, guys, you are hearing this correctly. The net performance gains, while impressive, are not quite there without the DLSS 3.0. Look at this chart with benchmarks from Nvidia. In most cases, you're getting about 60 to 70% performance improvements without DLSS 3. So, if you're a gamer, you might want to wait to get the claimed frame rates until the DLSS 3 support rolls out. I don't see anything wrong with getting an RTX 3090 Ti unless you want to future-proof your PC, but you will be looking at an extra 800 bucks to do that. 